All right, it is 12.30. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, my name is Han Wendong. I'm the instructional technology librarian here, uh, and I'll be facilitating today's workshop on essential library resources, services, and skills for graduate students. This workshop is being recorded, and you will receive the recording as well as the slides uh, either later today or tomorrow. And the workshop should take less than an hour. Uh, throughout the whole workshop, you can feel free to ask any questions, or you can uh, save the questions towards the very end. And my colleague, Julissa Kenyon here, is helping me to monitor the chat today. So if you are on Zoom, you can feel free to unmute or use the chat if you have any questions. So here's the agenda for today. So first we'll talk about uh, the library spaces, specifically uh, several key service points, uh, spaces for you to study, as well as spaces for research and experiential learning. Then we'll talk about books and articles, how to find books and articles, how to locate them, and how do you request uh, materials that we do not own at the ULY library, and how to access databases uh, to uh, search for articles. Then we'll go over some search strategies, and some of these you might be familiar with. So hopefully uh, these will be used as a refresher if you are already familiar with you, most of the techniques, but hopefully most uh, everyone will at least learn something new from the strategies. And then we'll conclude with uh, talking about library resources that are specific to uh, graduate students. And throughout the whole uh, workshop, I'll make sure to touch on uh, the services and resources uh, that are applicable for graduate students, whether you are on campus or if you are off campus. Uh, hopefully some of those will be applicable to all of you. Uh, so first, uh, the service points. We have two key library service points. The first one is the circulation desk that is located on the first floor of the library. That's right in, right in front of you as you enter through the entrance. At the circulation desk, you can borrow, renew, and return library materials, uh, mostly print resources such as books, uh, course reserve items, government documents, and so on. As graduate students, you can check out as many books as you wish, and you can keep them for uh, up to 120 days. You can renew them twice. Uh, you also have access to our summit services. Our summit is a resource sharing uh, service that we provide that we are joining over with 30 other, uh, about 38 other academic libraries throughout Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. So sometimes we don't have books here, but uh, it might, they might be available in our summit library, and you may be able to request through our summit. Uh, you can keep them for up to 12 weeks, um, and you can renew them uh, for the most, most of the time, renew them one time. Uh, sometimes we may not have resources either from us or from Summit. That's when you can request items through interlibrary loan. Uh, and then the loan period is four weeks on average. Uh, next, we have the <coughs> reference desk. The reference desk is the uh, right next to the circulation desk. If you ever need assistance with identifying, locating, or accessing library and other types of sources for your uh, either class assignments or for your research, you can contact us at the physical and the virtual reference desk. Well, I can't really guarantee that you will always spot us like dressing as Star Trek characters, but I will say that we have a pretty dedicated group of uh, librarians ready to help you with your information needs. And so to access our reference chat, reference services, if you go to the library's main website on the top right, there's this Ask Us button. And so you can uh, seek for help using many different ways, such as chat, email, text, uh, and visit us as well. So I'll just show real quickly how the chat reference works. And so you can choose to enter a name here, or you can leave it blank for anonymous. And then if you have any questions, you can just feel free to ask using the chat box. And this service is being offered 24 seven. And so if you are working on uh, like your research assignment at three o'clock in the morning, you can still feel free to use this service. Um, so that's my uh, colleague, Tyler. So I'll just quickly uh, exit the chat. 
Um, you can also choose to meet with one of us uh, with a subject liaison person. So if you click meet, so you'll be able to access all our liaison librarians. So we have a liaison person for every single college. And so if you need to request an individual meeting, you can simply click this link uh, to schedule a meeting uh, with that person from your college. Uh, so that is uh, chat and uh, mute. Next, uh, we can talk about the study spaces. So we have two reservable study rooms uh, located on the first floor, and you can reserve them uh, at this link. The link to our reservable rooms that are located on the top right of the library's website uh, under book room. And we also have open group study rooms as well on the third and fourth floor. And those are our first come first serve places. We also, yes. Do any of those rooms have uh, large monitors like this? Uh, the ones on the first floor do. Uh, individual study rooms. We have several individual study rooms uh, on the third floor that you can reserve. Uh, so if you ever need like a quiet space uh, for take home exam or other projects, you can feel free to use the link to make a reservation. And then the first floor our instruction room is the room that we are currently in for those of us who are here in person. So this room is equipped with tables, rolling chairs, and instructor station. Uh, it's great for evening workshops, uh, large, large study groups as well. And you can reserve this space, must be reserved uh, eight hours in advance. We also have graduate study carols, and those are only available to graduate students on campus. If you have an approved uh, thesis or dissertation topic, but you don't have any other assigned office on campus. And these uh, tend to be tend to be in high demand. So during this time of the semester, I think they are all booked up. But in the future semester, uh, early uh, at the beginning of the semester, you can uh, come to the circulation desk and ask to be assigned to one of these if they are still available. And you have access to it for the entirety of the semester. And you can feel free to leave your computers, uh, papers, textbooks, anything in those rooms because only you have access to them and only you have the keys. We also have computer labs you can use on the first, second, and the fourth floor. And I just want to briefly mention that if you click this link, uh, you can browse the entirety of all the software that are installed on those computers. And so uh, they include like uh, common softwares like the uh, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and Office 365, but also uh, ArcGIS, uh, SPSS, R, and more. Uh, there's also the remote access lab connection guide. This is very helpful uh, for those of you who are off campus. Uh, if you need to connect to our computers using VPN, uh, just follow the instructions uh, by access accessing this link. Uh, next, let's talk about research and the experiential learning spaces. Uh, so the first one is Center for Digital Inquiry and Learning, also called CDIL which is our digital scholarship center uh, for web development, for history, and project management. And they offer a variety of different uh, fellowships uh, as well. So you can feel free to check out the fellowships, fellowships that are applicable to you that you might be interested in. Uh, they help, uh, we, they sort of help build uh, scholarship projects and investigate digital humanities approaches theories and research. So that's what the space is for. Next one is the Data Hub, which is our educational and collaborative physical and virtual spaces uh, can meet all your data related needs, such as data management, data analysis, uh, visualization, and so on. So if you click uh, your site here, you'll be able to uh, browse all those people with their own special expertise. So you can choose to contact them individually or you can email, call, you can also use the chat box at the bottom of it right here as well. Uh, the Making Innovating and Learning Laboratory, also called a mail, uh, it's our maker space featuring 3D printers, vinyl feathers, and several other, um, some other um, uh, making related tools. And you can feel free to check out their uh, 
to check out their workshops as well as their newsletter if some this is something you are interested in. And 3D printing using this space is uh, completely free of charge. Whether you are working on something related to your personal interests or working on something uh, related to a class or research. Uh, the Special Collections Reading Room is a space to view archival materials. And you can find items related to the history and the culture of Idaho and the university. You can feel free to make an appointment uh, with a staff member, or you can just feel free to walk in anytime as well, uh, as long as they are open. Uh, the studio space is our uh, dedicated room for uh, recording, editing, and digitizing AV-related content. And we have a variety of different uh, AV equipment that you can use. Uh, you can feel free to check out the uh, website where you can reserve a space. Uh, this is by uh, reservation only. And you can also browse uh, what's available in the studio as well as the equipment that you can check out as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also the e-glass, which allow you to make uh, engaging instructional content, instructional videos, and uh, engaging PowerPoint presentation as well for your class or maybe for like a conference that you are preparing for. So that covers all the library spaces uh, I want to touch on. So before we move on, uh, let's take a quick minute to see if anyone have any questions so far. Okay, so next, uh, if not, uh, let's move on to talk about books and articles. Uh, so first, let's talk about the catalog, which is our library's main website, live.uiho.edu. And then to search the catalog and search for, you can search using keywords and look for books, articles, and a variety of different types of resources. There is also this uh, magnifying glass that you can click. If you click that, you'll be directed to this screen where there are several other uh, drop down menus that you can choose. So the first one is what kind of item you are looking for. Default is all items, you don't care about item types, but sometimes you might be just looking for print books, ebooks, or articles. So you can change uh, the specific one that you are looking for. And then the second one is uh, contain the search words. Uh, the default is that you are searching for all the words, but they may be in not in any particular order and they may not be as close as together. If you are looking for like an exact term, exact phrase in a specific order, so you want to choose the second option that contain the exact phrase. And then lastly, sometimes you might want to start your search, or use your search uh, to start with the particular uh, words or phrases uh, in the, to return those results uh, that might be uh, what you're looking for. And then the default is to look for uh, records anywhere in the record based on the keywords that you supplied, but you can also choose to use the title, author, or subject uh, to look for uh, in, to look for information uh, in those specific in those specific fields, and then there is also this drop down menu asking you where you want the resources and what kind of format. So the default is UI plus Summit plus e resources that gives you the most comprehensive results. Uh, sometimes you might be only interested in resources that were that's owned that are owned by uh, our library. So you can choose the second option, or sometimes you are in the library you only care about. Uh, print resources, you can choose the third option, or sometimes if you are off campus, you only want the electronic resources only because requesting print resources might take a few days. And lastly, if you need to find like archival uh, sources, information, choose the special collections and archives. Uh, there's also the advanced search next to this magnifying glass. So if you click that, you'll be directed to this uh, screen where you can uh, change like a specific uh, location or the type of materials, whether print or uh, online, or you can also uh, apply additional filters as well as the language and the publication base as well. And we'll get more into this when we talk about the, uh, um, the search techniques in a little bit. 
So this is just a simple search result page that you might come across. On the left-hand side, there are additional filters that you can use as well, such as availability, resource type, locations, and so on and so forth. So feel free to uh, use additional filters to apply to your search. And then depending on whether you are looking for books and eBooks and articles and whether uh, they are available or not. So these are the four common scenarios that you may come across. Uh, so we can just go over them. So the first one is books. And so most of the time, if they are available, it will say available at a specific location. So the main library in this case uh, is located on the third floor. Most of the books that you that you find, they should be in the main stats. And then you just need to write down the column number and then uh, look for a map, which is pretty much scattered uh, everywhere in the library. So you won't, uh, so you're not gonna get lost. And then you just need to find the QA section in this case. Uh, I'm not gonna go over uh, detail about the, uh, the column number, but if you ever need like a quick refresher, feel free to check out the tutorial here. So most of the books that you find, they should be on the second, third, or fourth floor of the library on their main stack. Occasionally you might, come across uh, like a book located in the law library. The law library is located in the law building. Uh, if it says it's located in the curriculum center, uh, that's gonna be in the education building on the third floor. Uh, we use the uh, Library of Congress classification system to organize books, DVDs, and more. And these call numbers, they group similar subjects together, which makes browsing very easy. And so they are uh, alphabetized from A to Z, starting from the fourth floor all the way to the second. So if you have like a specific subject you are interested, uh, you can feel free to go into the stack to browse uh, or uh, to locate the specific information if you already find it in the catalog. Um, you can also choose to request it uh, uh, to have it picked up at a library or a different location, if you rather to have one of us to find it for you. And so you can change the pickup location here to either the main library, if you are on campus students, or if you are off campus, you can change it to your off campus address. There should be, there should be that option for you. Um, and you can also choose to, uh, you can also choose to place digitization requests for physical uh, materials. But how many pages that we can digitize is limited uh, since our requests will be uh, completed in compliance with copyright, uh, fair use guidelines. And But this can still be a good option if you only need like a few pages from a book rather than like a, uh, several chapters. Uh, locating summit books. Uh, so if you ever come across a book that says check access options, most of the time it's available in the summit library. And so all you need to do is to uh, click this link that says play summit request and then change your pickup location to either the main library if you are on campus or change it to your off campus address. Yes. I think you just answered this, uh, but we have a question. Is there a way for students on other U of I campuses to get access to books that may be part of the main library stacks? Sure. We just have to place a summit request. Yeah, so there are other ways. If you are on uh, Boise, Coeur d'Alene, or a different campus, the pickup location here, they should give you those options. If you are in Boise, Coeur d'Alene, or any other satellite um, campuses, in addition to your uh, off-campus address, if you are off-campus student. Yes. For shipping off campus to like online students, is there a charge for that? Uh, there is no uh, there is no charge if you are off campus students. We'll ship the book to you, and I think that we do provide a return shipping label, and then you can just drop it off at your post office. There is no there is no charge. Yep. Uh, so that's locating print books, uh, ebooks. Most of the time, uh, if we have access, this says we'll say uh, online access here. And then under full text availability under view online, there might be one or several links where you can click. That's how you can access and read the eBooks as long as you are uh, logged into your library's account. And then for articles, uh, very similar, art articles work very similarly. Uh, if we have access, there may be one or multiple links for you to click and access. 
but there might be situations where uh, we do not have the print or the online materials that you are uh, looking for, either from our library or from a summit library. Uh, in that case, you need to request it via interlibrary loan, also called ILL. Uh, the easiest way to get to interlibrary loan for this is go to the library's front page and click ILL. And then you'll be uh, directed to this page where you will be prompted to log in and then provide some information about the source that you are looking for. Um, if you never used it before, you just need to simply register an account and that is uh, also free uh, of charge as well. To access databases, one way to access database uh, for journal articles is to go to the library's homepage and click the articles tab. And then you'll be able to choose the databases uh, based on your specific discipline. And then when you click on any of these links, you'll be able to find all the popular uh, databases for your subjects, as well as some of the databases being recommended. Uh, by us. Mm -hmm. Another way to access database is to click the database A to Z if you already know the specific database that you are looking for. And so if you need to say access like Google Scholar, Web of Science, you can simply go to uh, click the A to Z and then scroll down to uh, uh, G for Google, uh, Google Scholar or W for Web of Science. Uh, so that's how you can uh, find, locate, and access both and articles. Any questions before we move on? Okay. So next, let's talk about some specific search strategies when you are looking for like books, articles, or other type of or other other types of information and resources. So the first one is keyword, which is to identify uh, the important words or the phrases of your topic. So here on the screen, we just have a couple of sample uh, topics um, uh, across many different disciplines. So what you can do is to highlight the important words and phrases and only search for those words and phrases. And one way to search is also to use the Boolean operators to connect those search terms. Depending on how you want to define your search, if you want to narrow it or to expand it. Uh, this is just a simple uh, example to illustrate that if you are looking for something related to cheese nutrition, you can use and um, as one of the most common Boolean operators to search for words contain both of the words. And the, re uh, the results will be uh, in this overlap section. If you are using or, so you are looking for uh, results related to either of the two words. And so that will be the entire uh, two bubbles here. Sometimes you want to eliminate one of the choices here, and then you might want to use the knob um, <laughs> over here. And then another um, cluster search tool I just briefly want to mention is the Carrot tool, which is an open source search results clustering engine, and it can automatically cluster small collections of documents into thematic categories. Uh, there's one on the looking for information on the web, and there's also one on PubMed. And then you can access them based on the uh, pie chart or based on the tree map, based on how you prefer mm -hmm. to view the collections. And then you can choose to zoom in to uh, um, to click any of those to for more detail. Uh, truncation is a way to include the different word uh, endings and spellings. And uh, most databases, some databases uh, allow you to use truncation. And then here are some of the common symbols. So if I add a truncation uh, symbol at the end of child, I'll be able to uh, find results related to uh, child, children, uh, childhood, and so on. Uh, another way to search is to use the wildcards. So the wildcards is uh, a way to substitute like a specific symbol, uh, such as like uh -huh. a specific substitute symbol for one letter or a word. Okay, so if I use wildcard here, I can be able to find uh, women and women uh, can be used both for plural or singular. And also for color in this case, uh, this is, could be useful is if the word is spelled in different ways, such as the American and the British spelling, but still they still have the same meaning. 
And then the phrase search is to search for a specific uh, search for specific phrases. So like lung cancer, physical therapy, those are specific phrases that you want to lump them together. And most databases, they recognize the double quotation mark. Um, so if you use the free searches. And then the combinations, you can use combinations to enclose the uh, search terms and your operators in parentheses to specify the order uh, to how it's being interpreted. And information within the parentheses is being read first and information outside the parentheses uh, is being read next. Uh, otherwise, if you don't put them in parentheses, so A, uh, N, and not, those typically take precedence. Um, so you feel free to use combinations uh, when they apply. Uh, proximity is to use uh, to find terms are within set number of words with, within each other. And so sometimes they use this curly sign, sometimes they use near. And they will give you the results, including both of those words within certain number of words of each other. And so sometimes you might be looking for, say, uh, like diverse demographic or demographically diverse or things like that. You want them to be very close to each other. Uh, so you can use proximity. Does, yes. does the order of those matter? The order shouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Subject headings, which is just uh, really functions very similarly as hashtags uh, used by information professionals to categorize uh, to categorize information sources. They're also called control vocabularies, descriptors, and by several other names. And there are two ways to uh, locate the subject headings. One is to perform a simple search in the uh, database you're looking for. And then under subject terms here, you can simply browse and click any of those terms, or you can just copy them and then paste them into uh, into your search string and then change the and then change the field into subject. You can also choose to browse at the through list or sometimes called subjects. Every database may have like a different name and you can also browse and search that way as well. Uh, but most databases they they have their own unique subject headings. And so they may not uh, transfer over when you switch from one database uh, to another different database. Uh, the level of Congress subject headings uh, is the only subject headings list accepted as the, uh, the worldwide standard. And it is the most comprehensive list of subject headings in print in the world. Uh, this can be very helpful if you are looking for uh, books and uh, you are, if you are looking for books and eBooks, what you can do is to browse the LCH, LCSH uh, headings over here and then simply click those, or you can perform a search here uh, by following this link. And so the sample search I did was uh, a search for death penalty, but the proper term uh, recognized by the level of Congress is the capital punishment. And then when you perform a search, you may also find, you are also able to find like broader terms, narrower terms, other terms related to what you are looking for. Uh, a field search is essentially uh, asking the database where you are searching. Most of the time it's uh, anywhere in the record, but sometimes you want to specify that you are only looking at it in the title or maybe you are only looking at it in the subject terms, like the one that we just found, or maybe in the author, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, backward citation is a way to go back in time and look at the reference list. Uh, this could be very applicable when you find a good source related to your topic, and then you can consult the literature cited or the reference list at the very end of the article. But one limitation with this strategy is that, so this, this article was published in 2011. And so using this strategy, you can only find resources that are maybe close to this topic, related to this topic, but that were published in 2011. So what you can do is to use go forward in time and look at who is citing the article that you just found. And so there are, depending on the database you are using, uh, there are, they may uh, appear in different areas of the record. In Web of Science, you want to go into citations to look for the articles citing this specific article. 
Uh, in Google Scholar, you can go to Cited By, and that's also available in several other databases. And uh, that may vary uh, based on the database. Not all, the, not all the databases enable uh, this function. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a couple of things to remember uh, when you perform, when you conduct searches. Uh, one is to try to use different search strategy. There is really no uh, like one size fit all uh, strategy that can yield you the most comprehensive results. You have to try different things and see what works and what not. Mm -hmm. uh, try to use a different variety of databases because different databases they may have access to uh, different uh, sources. And then use look for different types of resources. So in addition to books, articles, you can also try to find like conference proceedings, conference papers, uh, industry reports, uh, government documents, uh, thesis, dissertations, and so on. A lot of times you might not be able to find a lot of uh, records related to what you're looking for. Uh, it's possible that there just not being a lot of research done uh, on your topic. So there might be situations where you need to uh, expand your search or maybe uh, slightly revise your topic. And just remember that good research is gonna take time. Okay, so just there's really, there are, uh, there are good techniques to perform searches, but there's really no shortcuts. Uh, so just make sure to take the time you need uh, to conduct your research. And if you ever need help, uh, we are here to help you uh, with uh, any of your information. Okay, uh, so that concludes the search strategy, yes. Yes, so we have a request. Uh, could you please repeat the carrot two section and just talk a little bit more about how that works? Sure, um, let's go back. Uh, so the carrot two essentially across the open bed. So depending on like specific search term that you enter. And then, so these are like the, so essentially it's like a cluster uh, database and so groups all the similar like sources that they find uh, to like subcategories and then uh, so if you are interested in something related to like humanities or social science you, that would be the most appropriate one but if you are looking for something related to uh, like uh, science biology or medicine so PubMed may be uh, more appropriate I haven't Personally, I haven't really uh, spent a lot of time on this tool. Most of the time, I was just trying to look at like what are some of the sources that have uh, been published on that specific uh, topic I just provided, or maybe trying to find ways to uh, look for uh, different terms I can use uh, apply for my search, like trying to find like related terms, trying to find synonyms, or trying to find uh, other uh, terms uh, essentially for your search. Hopefully that sort of answers. And so if you click on any of those, does it then show you like a list of sources that fit lung cancer as well as that narrower concept? I think that's how that works, I think. So here are, here are the results you can find and they are available from uh, the CBI and you can feel free to click any of those. Um, but uh, yeah. I really should probably spend more time on um, uh, exploring this tool before I uh, talk about it in like a library workshop. Uh, feel free to uh, spend more time uh, doing your own exploration. It's neat to see it visually like that. Yeah. If you are a visual person, I find it very helpful. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Just be. Okay. Any other questions? Online? Okay. Okay, lastly, let's talk about uh, several other library resources for graduate students. Um, so we have research guides uh, that are curated by uh, librarians uh, specific, uh, specifically. So we have course related guides. Um, so they might be related to a specific course, but we don't, while well, we don't have many uh, guides uh, for graduate level classes, but some of the undergraduate level courses might still be relevant. And so those might still be worth checking out. And then we have something uh, more general purpose uh, related, such as accessibility, 
are looking for government information or looking for images uh, for your presentation, uh, how to access our campus or specifically library resources when you are off campus students. And all of us have access to the New York Times. So if you want to, uh, so if you want, if you are interested in reading New York Times articles, so feel free to uh, follow the instructions from this link by following that link. And then we also have subject specific guides related to a specific discipline. And then lastly, we have uh, some based on like special topics such as citation management, uh, citing sources, uh, OER, and so on. Uh, next, we can talk about thesis and dissertations. So first I want to uh, point out that there's a uh, very nice thesis and dissertation resources put together by the College of Graduate Students of uh, Graduate Studies. And so if you need help, like looking for like a, maybe like an example thesis or not knowing how to start, how to write, or if you need like uh, references or examples of the handbook, feel free to check out the resources that they put together. Then we have the Vivo Resource Network. Uh, so you can feel free to browse the different disciplines and people uh, that is, uh, that is the, in the research networks at the University of Idaho. Uh, thesis and dissertation collection. This is a digital collection that we put together uh, over since 20, 2014, looks like. And so you can feel free to browse or search any specific discipline or maybe specific topic. So these are all the thesis and dissertations completed by our previous graduate students who, um, who finished their degree at the University of Idaho. Uh, the progress this uh, dissertation and thesis global this is a uh, uh, another very useful tool uh, i just want to quickly go over that in the advanced search bar you can search for like specific individuals on campus let's say uh, for a demo if i'm interested in looking for uh, dr mayor from fcs to see uh, the committees that she served as the advisor and then in the institution here, I can just change it to University of Idaho and perform a search. And then you'll be able to find all the thesis and dissertations uh, by previous students who Dr. Mayer uh, served as the advisor. And you can also change that to a committee member as well, where you can do uh, advisor or committee member and then change the end for work. Uh, there's also the library catalog advanced search. Uh, just need to you just need to make sure that the material type is changed to dissertation and thesis. And uh, if we if you find like a print thesis and dissertation that was completed by a graduate student who previously attended the University of Idaho, and you can choose to request a digitization, and we will digitize it and send you the PDF file. Uh, lastly, just a couple other miscellaneous tools or resources. First one is the access tools, uh, help you with finding like open access um, article, journal articles. So these might be like additional, uh, like extension browsers, uh, web browser extensions that you can add to your uh, web browser. Uh, we have data resources, we have digital collections, uh, equipment, we talked about that earlier, uh, government documents, and then the OAPF, Open Access Publishing Funds. So if you are thinking about authoring, uh, like writing article journal, journal articles, and then submitting to open access journals. So you can choose to use, apply for funding to help pay for some of your uh, article processing charges, as long as those journals are eligible open access journals. Uh, we also have workshop resources, so resources from the previous workshops uh, that the libraries have uh, has facilitated in the past. So you can feel free to browse or simply conduct a search related to what you are looking for. Um, we can also filter by uh, graduate student related just by typing in graduate. And because we have a graduate student essential workshop, where uh, we might offer like different uh, workshops uh, every semester. So sometimes we have like a rotating uh, schedule 
and all the presenters, most presenters, they made their uh, video recordings available. Sometimes you can also find like hand, handouts, slides, and other types of resources as well. And all of our workshops are, if you are interested in uh, register, registering additional workshops, feel free to go to the calendar and see what's coming up as well. Uh, that was a lot of information, but uh, as I mentioned, I will send you the uh, workshop recording as well as the slides to you uh, either later today uh, or tomorrow. And then there's also uh, a optional anonymous feedback form that you can feel free to uh, give me feedback or maybe there's something that you were hoping to get covered or that you didn't get uh, covered or maybe there are additional topics that you want us to uh, think about in the future. So feel free to let us know. Uh, questions? before we uh, conclude the workshop. Uh, yes. Go ahead. My understanding is there's several librarians on staff who are like specific subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. Is there one for music? We do have a music liaison person, Rochelle. Uh, I, she, I, I'm not sure if she has a music degree or music background, but um, I think like, I know at least uh, our library dean, Ben Hunter, he has a music degree. So depending on your research needs, you can feel free to reach out to either Rochelle or Ben, or maybe just send it to the general uh, library reference desk. And based on what you're looking for, we can connect you to the correct, to the right person. Okay, cool, thank you. Did you want us to write our information here so we can get the recording? Is that where we're No, so uh, because you all register via our calendar, so I have everyone's email, so you don't need to do anything okay. extra. Okay. As long as you registered, as long as it wasn't just drop in. If right. you just dropped in, fill out the sign in sheet, but if you registered. Okay. okay, and before everyone leave, I just want to quickly mention that we have five additional workshops being conducted every semester, every week, uh, every Wednesday from 12.30 to 1.30. So you can either uh, register and then come to the first floor classroom to attend in person, or you can uh, attend uh, via Zoom as well. And even if you know that there might be something you are interested in uh, learning about, but you have other like class or other schedule conflicts, you can still register and we will still send you the uh, uh, the link to the recording as well as like handouts or slides that uh, our workshop facilitators choose to share with us. Okay. Thank you. Hey, I don't see any other questions. Uh, so thank you all again for attending and uh, hope you all have a great rest of your semester. One last question. Is there um, any workshops coming up about uh, AI assisted like it's not being planned. So the question was, we have any more, any upcoming workshop related to AI assisted tool? Uh, the answer to that is that we don't have anything planned, but feel free to read us your suggestions when we send you the, the feedback form. Yes. And it might be worth, um, on that workshop list, the data hub, which Hanwen had mentioned, also works with other campus units to kind of co-offer work, co workshops. And I think the research computing and data services um, one of those individuals is considering offering a workshop related to AI tools. It just hasn't been scheduled yet. So that would be coming, um, if it is, later this fall. And that'll appear on the workshop resources list, too. Yeah, that's right. Somebody just gave one over at the School of Music like a week and a half ago. They gave an hour long seven it, was, it was more focused on... Um, so you were there. Yeah, okay. it was more focused on the instructors and um, on how to manage or... Um, discourage plagiarism using AI and how to encourage using AI to facilitate with their, their teaching methods. So mm -hmm. it was not so much on how graduate students can utilize it in your own research. Mm -hmm. Okay, if no more questions, you are all free to go. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.